And we are underway. Joey Marty wins the face off. And Fournier tries to play it through center, but it's impeded. And now the Steelers will dump and chase, but Ben Bounds will send it around only as far as a white and orange jersey. And that puck loops over the glass and into the crowd. Head and collects. And whenever the play breaks, there seems to be a lot of space through the neutral zone for both teams. Langley with the drive, and what a finish! That is from the number 70. He collects a knuckle pack and guides it top shelf. Devils take the lead. That's a fantastic goal here for Charles Langley. If you look, Cleese and Forney just stays up by the hunt, by the circle. Langley collects it with a slap shot. Gets its 50th point of the season in great style as well. Wicked release on that shot there. And the Devils take a 1 0 lead. Laid off for Langley and put himself in a bit of a vulnerable position. And now Pitt's got a breakaway. Steelers coming the other way and he score. Pitt just a second ago had shown what danger he possessed. And the second time of asking, he finishes. Yeah, he was unlucky on the first attempt. It's really good idea just to get that stick down and maybe try and tip that one past. But if you look, it's Mark Lewis just jumps up defensively, trying to go for that fight with Tanner Ebley after that hit on Charles Langley. Just allows Josh Pitt to go in on a breakaway after that defensive confusion. And he's not gonna, he's not gonna be denied in the second time of asking. It was a very similar body position to the Evan Mosey hit. Nowhere near the same contact, of course, from Ebley. You can see why Mark Lewis has reacted to that the way he has. He isn't gonna allow a similar situation to occur that we saw in Nottingham last week. Neely. Neely trying to come through with it and Bounds was tracking it. O'Connor with a blast and it's there. Through traffic, Ben O'Connor takes a late first period lead for the Steelers. Yeah, that's a bit of a broken play to start with. Mike Heading clears this one out the crease towards the boards and then Ben O'Connor gets it. Blasts it on a slap shot and it does take a wicked deflection at some point to go past Ben Bounds. It's the Steelers 2-1 lead and Credit to them, the way they played. I think they deserve to have something out of this first period. A minute 40 to go. They've been very good, very physical. And Ben O'Connor has been great. So gets a, I think he's going to get credit for that goal at least. Pitt going all the way through and is allowed to shoot. And his shot goes over the bar. Chance for Owens now with a drive. Blocked. But it falls to Pitt and now it's a chance and it's a goal. The Steelers get a two goal advantage. On the power play, it's 3-1. Yeah, great work here from the Steelers on the power play. The Devils did very well in the opening minute of that penalty kill, but then it was after Josh Pitts ran into the zone, just completely unchallenged, and that was just off the boards. I'm not sure if Pitt meant to do that. If he does mean to bank that one up from behind the net out in front, then that's a very, very intelligent play, but it just leaves a wide open uh, left-hand side of that cage, and the Steelers aren't going to miss from there, and it's like a 3-1 lead. Fournier. Marty, back to Fournier, good save by Whistle and the rebound's put away. The Devils eat into the lead and it's the second goal of the evening for Charles Longley. There's a lot of white jerseys out in front of Jackson Whistle on that one, but no one picks up Charles Langley at the back door. It's the shot that comes in from Gleason Fournier from the point, spills loose to Langley and he just allowed too much time there and just tucks that one in for his second goal of the evening. Gets the Devils back within one now with a power play strike. Livingston. It's hit the top of the goal. The light's gone on. It's a heck of a wrist shot from Livingston. This may be reviewed. You look, it just comes off the glove of Jackson Whistle and that rides up and that's back bar and out. That's definitely a goal. That is a goal all over. Well. We'll take another couple of looks at this. It's come off whistle and gone right into the roof of the goal. I think this is going to stand, Ollie. 
Yeah, I think they've got to give it to see Kipper's head for the first time in a couple of weeks there. But uh, it's a good shot from James Livingston as well on that left-hand side, and Whistle just gets enough out of it, but deflects it into his own net, unfortunately for him. It's a goal. The clock will go back, and we've got a tie. It was a lingering wait to see. But it is a third goal, and it is a first goal at home for Livingston. Pope is there to lend a hand. Langley. Shot comes in and what a finish that is from the bench. A lovely feat to Hedden. He goes bar down and the Devils regain the lead. Bar down beauty here for Mike Hedden. Jackson Whistle's protesting a little bit. There was a bit of contact in that crease area and Whistle was very slow to recover but it's a great bit of vision from Charles Langley on that right-hand side to see Mike Hedden coming in off the bench and he just rips that one bar down and that's a 4-3 lead. Great, great turnaround for the Cardiff Devils. Shot comes in, flashed wide. Now is a chance, Martin! It's punches and punches again at the Viola Arena and Joey Martin gets the devil the two goal advantage. That's exactly what we were saying, that next goal could have been crucial. After that, Mike Hedden won, the Cardiff Devils have really turned it on. Two very quick ones, Joey Martin just alone in the slot. No one really challenging him too much. He's allowed to walk in and then put that one upstairs on Jackson Whistle for a 5-3 Devils lead. And it's the 20th goal of the season for Joey Martin as well. Devils still with the pressure. Richardson with a shot, and it's down its way through. I'm not sure who got the final touch, but the deflection fooled Jackson Whistle, and the Devils race into a three goal advantage. It's great work from Mark Richardson as well. He starts his play down low and then cuts back to the blue line where he's more familiar. He just puts a bit of a speculative effort on net there. Benavodio takes a bit of a swipe at it to try and get that one across the line. Whether or not he makes any connection, I'm not too sure. But it is going to be Richardson getting a point there. If you look, that's deflected in the high slot area. And I don't think Benavodio gets a touch on it. So I think that's going to be a goal for Mark Richardson. O'Connor. Couldn't release the shot like I'm sure he would have liked as we're into the last two minutes of the game and the Devils have a chance. Whistle with a good leg save as it found its way through. It has, no, the referees have waved it off. We're gonna go to the goal line technology. The Devils are celebrating. Jackson Whistle is apoplectic. This initially looks like an absolutely fantastic save from Jackson Whistle. You see they peeks his leg out. That does cross the line eventually, but it is going to go through a review. Most likely for goaltender interference to see straightaway Tom Pairing just signals to a review on that one. But it's a shot that comes in from Rutgers initially. Pope just pays it to him on the backhand, and it is initially stopped from Jackson Whistle. The Steelers' leg, I think, that hits that in. And we've two visits to Kipper's head today. How lucky are we? Incredibly lucky. That's a beautiful head as well. It's a goal. It's a seventh for the Devils. Much to the chagrin of Jackson Whistle in the Steelers' goal. But it is the exclamation point on a Devils victory in the Elite League. Lots of goal scorers. The Viola Arena crowd rises to its feet. The Devils end the weekend on a high at the sound of the final buzzer. It finishes Cardiff Devils 7, Sheffield Steelers 3.